In the early 1990s, we realised that computers would get incredibly clever, and this would be a big threat unless we could actually figure out some way of keeping up with the machines. And the obvious way of keeping up with the machines is to be able to make a direct connection between our brains and the machine world. So we thought, well, you know, how, do you, how can you do that? You, know, you can't stick a DIN socket into the back of your head. That isn't going to work very well. But then lots of people started talking about nanotechnology and self-replicating devices, and we thought, well, at some point in the distant future, you know, say 2030, 2040, who knows, you should be able to get an injection into your arm with a few nanotechnology devices which would wander up to your brain and start connecting to every single neuron. And there's enough address space, and even an IP version 6, the, the internet addressing system, you can address signals to every single neuron individually in your brain. In fact, every neuron in the entire planet, everybody's brain, you can, you can send signals to. So we've got a means, in principle, of connecting electronic devices to every brain cell in your head. Therefore, you can take um, an exact replica of your brain. So I could have Ian Pearson Mark II living inside my PC in 2030. And I could have all of my thoughts backed up on there, all of my memories backed up. And if I get run down by a bus, it doesn't matter. It's not a career problem because I've got a backup on the network. So, th you know, this is a wonderful concept for the future. We call it Soul Catcher, effectively capturing my entire mind and dumping it on a chip, well, notionally a chip. And I would have a, an, another existence in, in, in cyberspace. They, unfortunately, a lot of the media have misunderstood. They thought we were doing this next year, but it's actually sort of 25, 30 years away, unless we get some very big breakthroughs in technology between now and then. Mm -hmm.